Hello my friends. In the last part of Kinesis with Lambda tutorial, we're going to learn how to set a Lambda function as a Kinesis data stream consumer. We will be using the serverless framework to create a real-time stock market streaming application. This will wrap up all the topics learned so far in this playlist, such as the two different ways to consume a Kinesis stream and the different event source mapping parameters. Check out other videos in this playlist to learn about these topics. At first, I'll go over the architecture of the application, then I'll go over the code, and lastly, I'll run the code and see how it works. This is the architecture of the application. Stock prices for Amazon and Google are published into a Kinesis data stream every 100 milliseconds. The Kinesis stream has three consumers. Each consumer is a lambda function. The first is the aggregator consumer. This consumer is defined as an enhanced fanout consumer, which means it gets a dedicated throughput of two megabytes per second. The responsibility of this consumer is to calculate the average price of a stock in a time window of 60 seconds. This is done by using the tumbling window in seconds parameter, which allows you to retain the state of your lambda function between invocations in a time window of 60 seconds. The second is the Amazon consumer. This consumer is defined as a shared throughput consumer, which means it shares the two megabyte throughput with all the other consumers in the stream. The responsibility of this consumer is to get real-time Amazon stock prices and decide if to buy or sell. The ability to filter events only with the AMZN ticker symbol is done by using a filter criteria. It filters events before the invocation of the Lambda function. The third is the Google consumer. This consumer has the same configuration as the Amazon consumer with only one change. It filters events only with the GOOG ticker symbol. Each one of the consumers described earlier is defined with an SQSQ on failure destination config. This configuration sets up the on failure location for events to be sent to once it has reached the maximum number of times to retry when the function returns an error. Then, Lambda will send some metadata about the failed batch to this destination. In order to process failed records from the SQS dead letter queue, I have defined a DLQ consumer lambda function. This function will receive metadata about the failed batch and print it to CloudWatch. Now that we understand the architecture, let's dive into the code. This is the project for the application. The project is divided into two separate sub-projects. The first is the Financial Data Publisher. It's a simple Node.js project that publishes Amazon and Google stock prices into a Kinesis data stream. The Publish function receives two parameters, Total Publish Time in Seconds and Publish Interval in Milliseconds. Total publish time in seconds is the total time duration to publish the records, and the publish interval in milliseconds is the time interval to publish records. At first, I'm publishing two records with corrupted price values. This will demonstrate how the error handling works by causing the Kinesis consumers to fail and publish the metadata of the failed records to the DLQ. Later, I'm publishing two records to the Kinesis data stream every 100 milliseconds for two minutes, and then the process will exit. The second is the Kinesis Consumers Project. This is a serverless framework project responsible for building and deploying the cloud services discussed on the architecture part, such as the Lambda functions, the Kinesis stream, and the SQS queue. Each serverless project contains a serverless YAML file. This file is the main configuration file and its responsibility is to define the different serverless components and the relation between them. 
The serverless YAML is divided into several sections. The first section is the provider. This section defines general settings for our Lambda functions. The runtime is Node.js 14. Lambda memory size is 256 megabytes. Lambda timeout is 3 seconds and the region is EU West 1. The second section is the functions. This is where we defined our Lambda functions. Each function has a handler property. This property points to the file containing the code you want to run in your function. The events property holds a list of triggers for your Lambda function. Each one of the Kinesis consumers is triggered by a stream event of type Kinesis. You need to supply the stream ARN. This can be done using the CloudFormation Intrinsic function. The DLQ consumer is triggered by a SQS event. You need to supply the SQS ARN. This can be done by using the CloudFormation Intrinsic function. It's important to mention that the serverless framework automatically creates an IAM role for your Lambda function based on the event's property. For example, a Lambda that consumes a Kinesis stream is created with a role with all the needed permissions to read from the stream. Once defining an event for your Lambda function, you can also set the event source mapping parameters according to your requirements. The third section is the resources. This is where you can define the infrastructure resources you need and easily deploy them. What goes in this resources property is raw cloud formation template syntax. As you can see, I've created two resources. The first resource is a Kinesis data stream named demo stream. I use a reference variable to reference the cloud formation definition of this resource. You can explicitly define the resources definition on the serverless YAML file, but it's much more elegant to do it this way. Stream name is demo stream, retention period is 24 hours, and we have one shard. The second resource is an SQS queue named dead letter queue. Before going over each one of the Lambda functions, I want to talk about a useful package I use in each one of the Lambda functions. It's called MIDI. MIDI is a very simple middleware engine that allows you to simplify your AWS Lambda code when using Node.js. In addition to the MIDI core library, I'm also using the MIDI event normalizer. This middleware parses and normalizes AWS events. We will see later on the usage of this package. Let's go over the different Lambda functions. I'll go over the important configurations. If you want to learn about the different event source mapping parameters, check out other videos in this playlist. The first function is the aggregator consumer. It's being triggered by Kinesis data stream. Setting consumer to true means that this is an enhanced fanout consumer. Tumbling window in seconds is set to 60 seconds. This will allow me to calculate the average price of a stock in a time window of 60 seconds. Parallelization factor is 1 because you are not allowed to have concurrent batch processing if tumbling window is enabled. The main function is aggregator consumer. Because this function is defined with tumbling window of 60 seconds, the state will be passed between lambda invocations in this time period, which will allow me to calculate the average. The main function is wrapped with the MIDI function, and I'm using the event normalizer middleware, which will base 64 decode and JSON parse each one of my records data. When the tumbling window is enabled, additional attributes are automatically added to the Lambda function event input. If is final invoke for window is set to true, then it's the last invocation for the tumbling window and I call the process final result function. This function calculates the average stock prices for Amazon and Google and prints it to the CloudWatch log. 
In case is window terminated early is set to true, then it means that the state object exceeds the maximum size of one megabyte. And again, I'm calling the process final result method. Otherwise, I'm calling the aggregate method. This method creates a state object in case it's the first invocation in this tumbling window. Otherwise, it uses the existing state object and sums the total price of a stock and increase the records counter. I use those two fields on the process final result to calculate the average. Eventually, the function returns the state object to be passed between lambda invocations in a specific tumbling window, and I'm also returning an empty batch item failures list to indicate that the batch completed successfully. The second function is Amazon Consumer. It's a shared throughput consumer with a parallelization factor of 2, which means that the event source mapping will pull two batches of size 10 and invoke two functions concurrently. On filter patterns, we define the filter criteria, which means that this function will only be invoked for records where the data symbol is AMZN. Under the destinations property, I have defined an on failure destination for the SQS DLQ. This configuration is defined on all three Kinesis consumers. The main function is Amazon Consumer. Here again, I'm using MIDI to wrap my main function and add an event normalizer middleware to base64 decode and JSON parse each one of my records data. The code is pretty straightforward. I'm iterating through the records, and for each record data, I'm calling the getAction method, which returns a buy or sell action. GetAction is not doing too much other than returning a random action. The third function is Google Consumer. This function has the same configuration and code like the Amazon Consumer with only one change. The filter patterns definition filters records with the GOOG data symbol. The last function is the DLQ consumer. This function subscribes to the DLQ where the Kinesis consumer publish metadata about failed records. When the function receives this type of event, it prints it to the CloudWatch log. Here again, the main function DLQ consumer is wrapped with MIDI and I'm using an event normalizer to JSON parse each one of my records body. Now that we understand the architecture in code, let's run it and see how it works. On the readme file in the git repo, you can see the running instructions. At first, on the Kinesis Consumers project, you need to run npmi to install project dependencies, then run npmi-g serverless to install serverless globally, and lastly to deploy the project, run serverless deploy. Make sure you configure AWS credentials correctly. Once finished, you can see that the following resources have been created successfully on your AWS account. The four Lambda functions, the Kinesis data stream, the enhanced fanout consumer for this stream, which is being used by the aggregator consumer, and the DLQ SQSQ. Next, in order to publish data into the Kinesis data stream, you need to run npmi to install project dependencies, and later run npm run produce to run the script. Again, please make sure you configure AWS credentials correctly. After everything is set up correctly, let's view the Lambda logs and see what is going on. Aggregator consumer logs show average stock prices every one minute. Amazon and Google consumers are getting batches of size 10 according to the batch size event source mapping parameter and for each one prints the action. And finally, on the DLQ consumer, you can see in the logs a metadata about the failed records. Using this metadata, you can fetch those records for further processing. In order to remove all the resources created, CD into the Kinesis Consumers project and run serverless remove. 
This will remove all the AWS resources created on the serverless deploy step. In conclusion, we learned how to set a Lambda function as a Kinesis data stream consumer. We also learned the two different ways to consume a Kinesis data stream and the different event source mapping parameters for application and error handling use cases. All of them allow this integration to be scalable, reliable, and maintainable. And to set all the pieces together, we created a streaming application using the serverless framework. Please let me know if you have any questions down below. Link to the GitHub repo as well as my LinkedIn profile are attached to the video description. Please feel free to reach out. I hope you enjoyed and it gave you value. I encourage you to run the code and play with it. If you want to learn more about AWS and all types of coding related stuff, please consider subscribing. Thanks, happy coding.